Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this linen apron dress. I'll start off by talking about how I drafted the pattern, including all of the measurements I used. Then I'm going to move on to the construction of the dress, including cutting the fabric and sewing all of the pieces together. And of course, at the end, you're going to get the grand reveal of the whole dress, as well as some final thoughts on what I liked about this project and what I would change about it if I were to make this project again. So let's start it right off by talking about how I drafted the pattern and what measurements I used to be able to draft my pattern. So this is kind of what I'm working with for this dress. Now, I did a little sketch of how I want it to look. I am by no means an artist, so this is a very, very rough sketch. But this is how I want the front of the apron dress to look. This is how I want the back of the apron dress to look. And then this is kind of how the side is going to function. So there's going to be a split in the side seam to allow for the skirt to be adjustable and you can use the waistband ties to adjust. So the waistband ties will tie around your waist, so the front ties will tie around to the back, and the back ties will tie around to the front, and that will hopefully give a nice adjustable option for this dress. And the excess fabric at the side should cover the slit, um, hopefully, if not, that should be okay. You can always wear like shorts or a petticoat underneath of it, but I'm hoping that the excess fabric will cover the slit enough that you won't even notice it. Up here we have a illustration of my fabric. So this is the length of my fabric, three meters, and this is the width of my fabric, 59 inches or 150 centimeters. Um, just because the website I bought it from did the width in inches, but I could pick meter lengths, so I had to do the conversions to make sure that this uh, diagram was accurate to what the fabric is actually going to look like. And then here we have my measurements and other measurements that are going to be important with the construction of this skirt. So, for example, my waist is currently 41 inches, my biggest part of my hips or my stomach really is 46 inches. Uh, I want the skirt to be 38 inches long from waist down. I'm quite short so this measurement should mean that the skirt doesn't drag on the floor uh, but it's still nice and full and long enough. The length of the bib part I want to be 7 inches, the width I want to be 12 inches, and I just figured this out by holding the measuring tape up to my chest and figuring out how large I wanted that to be. And then with my straps, they're going to be about 29 inches long and 1.5 and inches wide. I got this by crossing my measuring tape over approximately where the straps will go and then adding a couple inches just to be safe which I can always bring in in the construction of the garment or make them adjustable somehow. These are my goals for the dress. I want it to have a full gathered skirt, I want it to be an adjustable size, and I want it to have pockets. So those are my main goals when thinking about construction and how I'm going to make this. Then we move over to making the patterns. Now, I am not a expert in pattern drafting for garments, but what I'm trying to accomplish here is looking at historical skirt patterns and looking at the construction of historical skirts and dresses that were made to be adjustable. Mostly looking at undergarments for this, so things like petticoats um, that were made to be very adjustable because you weren't really going to see them so it didn't necessarily matter the exact construction of them if it was perfectly shaped for your body but more that you know as you grow and change it would still fit you nicely. 
Uh, and what I found was a lot of adjustable skirts and dresses just used rectangular um, panels and gathered the top of them in so you had a nice full bottom of the skirt but the top was still kind of cinched into the waist. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do with this skirt. I'm going to do two skirt panels, one for the front and one for the back. The width of the skirt panel is actually the length of my fabric. Uh, so I'm going with 59 inches. The length of my skirt panel is going to be 40 inches, which if you remember, I want the length of my skirt to be 38 inches. I added a couple inches for seam allowance and just to make sure that everything goes nicely. And then I figured out how I want the skirt to actually work. So each panel of the skirt to work. I'm, I figured out I wanna gather it down to 27 inches. And I got this measurement by having my waist measurement adding an inch to it for ease and for seam allowance, then adding six inches excess just so that it is very adjustable. So this will give me 12 extra inches all around the fabric for the waist and this will make sure that it is adjustable no matter what size I am and also will give me plenty of fabric to cover those side slits we talked about earlier and adding two inches for seam allowance. This is a lot more seam allowance than I will necessarily need, but I wanted to make sure that I had quite a bit of allowance there. So I'm going to um, gather down my top of the fabric down to 27 inches, and, and the gathered top is going to go folded into the waistband. For the waistband, I want to make sure that I have 16 inches on either side to be able to tie this around my waist comfortably while still leaving enough room to tie it properly instead of having to struggle with really short ties. And I figured this out by just holding my measuring tape around my body and figuring out what was a comfortable length for tying. The bib, very simple construction, it's just going to be one panel. Um, with the width of 13 inches and the length of 8 inches. This adds seam allowance to it. And I want to finish all seams before attaching to my garment. Again, I want all of the seams on this to be nice and finished and just look very, um, very professional or as professional as I can make them look. And this should also help it to be more... Um, more durable if I throw it through the washing machine whatever I'm doing with it my seams should be nice and durable and then I'm going to attach the bib to the front skirt piece behind the waistband I want that waistband to be visible I don't want to hide the waistband behind the bib so I want to make sure that the bib goes behind the waistband so we have a nice visible waistband in the front for my waistband I'm going to make two they're going to be 59 inches long three inches wide so that I can fold it and make it about a half an inch wide for the waistband. I want to make sure to sandwich the top of the skirt panels in waistband and ironing the raw edges of the waistband inside. This will make more sense when I actually do the construction of the dress. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is going to be the basic pattern and the basic construction of my skirt. It's very simple, it's just rectangular pieces of fabric cut out in the various sizes and for the straps I'm just cutting strips of my fabric and making my own straps. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Uh, it'll make more sense, like I said, once I'm actually constructing the garment. So let's move on to the construction stage. Before we start the construction, here's what I'm using. I have three yards of linen fabric, my acrylic ruler, two different types of thread, my scissors, and chalk for marking. First thing I did was took my chalk and my acrylic ruler to mark out all my pattern pieces 
because these are all straight line rectangles, this was super simple to mark out. I just had to make sure that I was continuously drawing a straight line and that I had marked out the correct lengths. But this was a lot easier than projects that have curved lines. Also going through and cutting out each piece as I marked it. This is just to help my chalk lines not smudge all over the place. It's just a lot easier to cut the fabric out while the marking lines were still nice and fresh. This was repeated for all of the pieces. So the two skirt pieces and the bib pieces. Here's just a close up of the marking. Let's see it in a little bit more detail here. And then this is marking the straps. Because I wanted the straps in the waistband to be three inch long strips of fabric, it was super easy to use my acrylic ruler to line them up all next to each other and mark them, cut them at the same time. We also had a lovely beetle join us for marking out the waistband and the straps. Um, this lovely beetle does get evicted from the project. Uh, I'm sorry to the beetle, but uh, you are not an integral part of the sewing process and are not welcome on my dress. <laughs> and when I was cutting out the strap and waistband pieces, I just made sure to cut them all at the same time, just so it was a little bit easier. And again, to avoid smudging my chalk lines, Although this chalk did stay very nicely on the fabric, I probably didn't have to worry about it all that much. I just wanted to be on the safe side and know that my markings weren't going anywhere. It's a bit hard to see here, but this is marking out the bib piece for the dress. I just marked it at that 13 inch mark for the length, or sorry, for the width. And then for the length here, I'm marking it at seven inches. And I'm always making sure to line up the ruler using the clear lines on it so that I know for sure my lines are as straight as they can possibly be. And here's all the pieces. So we have two nice and long skirt panels. We have three strips of fabric for the waistbands and the straps. And then we have the bib piece as well. And I, first thing I did after that was gathered down the waistband of the two skirt panels. I did this by hand because I don't have a gathering stitch on my machine, uh, but it was pretty simple to do by hand. Uh, there wasn't much struggle with this very quickly went along with a running stitch and this is where the two types of thread come in handy. I used a nice heavyweight thread for the gathering stitch here in white so that it stood out on my fabric because this thread will be pulled out at the end of the project once the uh, skirt panels are sewn into the waist. And then with my measuring tape here, I just measured out the thread to 27 inches and tied a knot in the end at 27 inches. This way I could very easily spread out the gathers in the skirt and know that I had the correct um, length or the correct waistband measurement um, and not lose all of my gathering. And I'm just roughly spreading out the gathers here just to make sure that it's going to look nice once it's into the waistband. And then I did the very arduous task of ironing both of my waistbands and the fabric I was going to use for the strap. For the waistbands, I folded it in half, ironed it in half, and made sure that there was a very nice crisp line here and that it was holding its shape very nicely. 
before going on to the next step, which is turning in the raw edge about a quarter inch, half inch, I would say. I'm not very good with inches. This is about one centimeter that I'm turning this in. And that's just to make sure all of the raw edges are kept neatly inside. When I do sandwich the skirt panel in here, this will make a lot more sense why I did this in a little bit, but mostly it was to make sure that no raw edges were exposed on the skirt and to make sure that the waistband was going to be nice and sturdy and last as long as possible. And I did this on both sides of the waistband. So I made sure to fold in both raw edges of the waistband. I didn't want there to be any raw edges showing on this garment. I then again folded the waistband piece in half and ironed it just to make sure that it was nice and crisp and that the first seam that I ironed there didn't lose its shape when I was ironing the other two pieces to the inside. And here I am marking the waist measurement onto my waistband. This is going to be where the skirt is sandwiched between. I know I had my thread marking on the gathering with the skirt, but I just wanted to be extra cautious and make sure that I was doing this properly so that the waistband would look nice and neat in the end. I then take my skirt panel, after double checking the measurements of course, <laughs> take my skirt panel and start sandwiching it into the waistband. I started by sandwiching either end, just again, just to make sure that it stays at that 27 inch mark that I wanted. And I then sandwiched the middle of the waistband in. This is to help the gathers be more um, even, just to make sure that I don't have a whole bunch of gathering on the one side of the skirt panel and not enough on the opposite side of the skirt panel. I wanna make sure that it's as even as it can be across the full skirt. And then I had to start sewing everything together. So I started with sewing the bib piece. Again, I wanna make sure there's no raw edges in this. So I'm doing a double folded over seam for the bib piece. And I sewed this up before I did the skirt panels just so that it would be easier to attach the bib to the skirt panel. I wouldn't have to stop and go back to do this. It would just already be done and ready for me when it was time to actually sew this together for the skirt. And then the process of sewing the waistband onto the skirt started. I started with the bottom edge of the waistband. This is the edge where all the raw seams are folded inside and also the edge that would close off where the skirt is gathered into. This is the most important edge for holding the skirt onto the waistband. So that's why I started with this edge. And as I was going, I made sure to double check that all of my gathers were tucked into the waistband nice and securely. I didn't want to get to the end of this only to realize that I had some gathers poking out of the waistband. Everything needed to be nice and secure in here. You can see me adjusting it as I go, just making sure that everything is in place before it goes under the needle and just continuing that stitch all the way to the end of the tie to make it nice and even and neat looking. I then top stitched the top edge of the waistband. This is mostly just decorative. Uh, it does end up catching some of the gathered skirt fabric as well, just to give it an double layer of security but it's mostly just decorative just to make it look nice and neat and to allow the waistband to hold its shape because this is linen uh, it has a tendency to lose its shape after a while then I tried on the skirt for the first time just to see if I liked how everything was sitting if I liked where the waist was this was also my opportunity to figure out where the straps were going to sit. 
So I just clipped the straps on and laid it over my shoulder and tried to feel where I would want the strap to sit in the back. I also checked in the camera just to make sure everything was looking good. And then when I got the skirt off, I actually measured the straps to make sure that they were even on both sides of the skirt. So they weren't off center and just pinned them in place to make sure everything would be good. And then I also sewed the straps down as well, just making sure to hide the stitching of the straps in the top stitching of the waistband. And I used, I think, two lines of stitching to hold them in place just so they were extra secure. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here at the end, I wanna talk about some final thoughts on the dress. So first off, the things that I really like about it. I love how all of the seams are finished. That's something that I usually struggle with when I make things and I'm really trying to put effort in to finish all of my seams. So I really like how all of the seams on this dress are nice and finished and should be long lasting. I like that I took the time to iron and top stitch the straps and the waistband ties because I think it just makes it look a lot cleaner, a lot better, and really it just functions better because the um, straps and the waistband aren't going to warp out of shape, um, especially with the top stitching. They should keep their shape nicely. And I do really like how the dress is adjustable at the waist. That was one of my big goals, and I'm really happy that I was able to pull that off. Now onto the things that I would change. There's a couple of things that I would change, starting with the bib. I would make this bib part just a little bit longer. It doesn't need to be any wider. The width is very nice, but I want it to be a little bit uh, longer just so that the skirt waist can be more adjustable to where it's placed. How this is right now, I'm really stuck on where the waist of the garment is. I can't lower it uh, any at all. So I would definitely change that if I were to make this again. I would also maybe use a little bit of a thicker fabric. I really wanted this to be made out of linen. I really wanted it to be a linen dress, but the one downside with that is it's quite light and a little bit see-through, which can be worked around by wearing shorts underneath or a petticoat underneath and it's completely fine. It's also nice that it is so light and airy. It means in the summertime, it won't be too hot. But I think using a thicker, just a little bit of a thicker fabric would also look really nice and uh, would stop having, stop the issues of it being a little bit see-through. 
The next thing is also about the skirt. I would use more fabric in the skirt, which I know is crazy because I already used so much fabric in the skirt panels, but I wanted to be able to do tiny pleats if I was to do this again. The one I'm wearing right now, the one I constructed, I did gathering at the waist, which is fine, but I feel like if I did pleats, it would be a little less bulky in spots and more uniform all the way around. So I would use more fabric in the skirt just to be able to get those nice uniform pleats rather than gathers. And the final thing I would change about this is I would make the ties for the waistband a few inches longer just so that it could be tied in a bow as is. I can just kind of tie it in a knot, um, but I would love to be able to tie it in a bow. So I would make those ties just a few inches longer on either side and I feel like it would then be perfect. But other than that, I feel like this project really turned out. It turned out pretty much exactly how I envisioned it, except for the bib. I really do wish I had made that a little bit higher, but it really, really worked out how I was envisioning, and I'm so excited I have this dress to wear now. I feel like it's definitely going to be a staple item in my wardrobe, especially in the spring and the fall. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like, and if you want to see more videos by me, feel free to subscribe so that you don't miss an upload. But thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!